Hello, hello. This is Yuri with Moving Sales Professionals and Let's Talk Moving Podcast. And with me today, I have Ryan Marsh, a former pro mover with over a decade of on-site moving experience, transitioned over to a super move this year. How are you doing today? Doing well, Yuri, and uh, thanks for the intro. No, no problem. Thank you so much for joining me. So what got you into the moving industry? That's a that's a great question. Uh, I was more kind of in the the finance type sales world prior to that, and uh, you know, family friend owned this moving company, and um, you know, I was kind of going through that transition. We had our first child, and I was working a hundred plus hours a week, you know, and I continued. I was chasing the dollar, constantly chasing money, but yet I had no time. So um, I had a great relationship with the owners of the moving company, or one of the owners of the moving company that I went to work for. And uh, I just, it was one of the things where, hey, I could go without less, go with less pay and have more time, weekends off, you know, no more late nights and things like that. So to me, it was a, it was a jump to provide more time to my family with, uh, with our newborn son. And that's kind of how I got into it. I knew nothing about the industry going into it. Um, but again, I love sales. I love the customer experience aspect of it. Um, so I thought I could really have a major impact um, on this moving company, making that transition. But ultimately, I wanted more time to be with my uh, with, with my new family. That was kind of the main reason for the jump. Yeah, no, of course I I get it. I get it. I kids my own on my own. So uh, why super move? Well, great question. Um, kind of a multi prong answer. So. We were at our moving company, we were, when I say pen and paper, we were pen, paper, typewriter, and carbon copies. And I came from a space where, yeah, it it was insane, man, insane. Um, I remember my first day vividly hearing the ring on the typewriter, and I'm like, what in the hell is that? Um, And we, you know, the office staff was typing up a a bill lading on the typewriter. Um, So that right there, I'm like, whoa, like, I just step back into like Jurassic Park, for goodness sake, is kind of what, the, what it felt like, you know, so I came from an industry where we utilize tech heavily. And we didn't utilize tech to eliminate employees, but it was more or less to streamline efficiency and mm. to to allow our sales reps and myself to basically spend more time doing the things that we really needed to be doing rather than all the clerical pinpricks um, of the day to day motions of sales um, in general. So you know, we started sniffing through some software, sort of say, trying to make that giant leap, um, which was scary. You know, when I was a young guy, um, you know, I always, always loved tech. But again, going from that paper and pen over to a whole new system was a scary jump. Um, still is today for for many, many, many folks yeah, in the industry, yeah. right? Yeah, tr- um, trust me, I get that, too, because uh, when I first got into moving, which was in 2003, uh, the company that I was brought on, they used the, 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 at that point. I mean, I haven't heard of any moving CRMs at that point, right? So the first thing that we what we did, we used Microsoft Access to create the whole freaking database and all the pages and everything else from scratch. So that's wow. what we had. And then when I left that moving company, because I got fired for being too good of a salesperson, and uh, and literally that is true. I'm not making that up. <laughs> this was like t- 2003. It was a very very good time to work in moving industry in Los Angeles, which is where which is where I was at that particular moment. And uh, you know, I was being paid eight bucks an hour, but I was paying being paid like ten bucks for every job, ten fifteen bucks for every job I booked. And wow. I booked anywhere from 10 to 20 every single day. So needless to say, when the guy had to pay me 80 bucks for working 10 hours, but then he had to pay me another, you know, 100 to $200 for the jobs I booked, he got a little greedy. So that's why I got fired. Uh, <laughs> but then some guys from that same company opened up their own real quick. And I recreated that whole database from scratch. So I actually know how much of a pain in the butt that is. Now, I mean, it's not quite a typewriter, but it's in comparison to what's available now. Yeah, it was definitely a dinosaur. It was. And now for a quick message from our sponsors. For a limited time only, we have partnered with an SEO and marketing company with discounted rates for their services. Schedule an appointment via Calendly link below to learn more. Thank you. And now getting back to the podcast. It was insane. Um, and, and just the efficiency aspect. It's like, if I wanted to book a move at that time, I had to track down like the holy grail of books, right? So mm-hmm. we didn't have, you know, Excel sheets or spreadsheets. We had none of that, right? No TVs, nothing, nothing mm-hmm. fancy. It was the old school paper and pen. And you know, it it, it worked, Yuri. And I think mm-hmm. that's the, the biggest holdback in, in this industry is 
what they're doing now, it works, but there's a better way to do it. Right. So kind of circling back to the Supermove piece and how I got there is, you know, we, we demoed a whole bunch of different companies. You know, we signed up with uh, another particular CRM slash move management. And, uh, they, you know, they, oh, am I allowed to say? Yeah, why not? Uh, move HQ. Okay. Move HQ. And, uh, you know, they, they. Yeah. Not too many companies use that one for whatever reason. I mean, we, we use like at Moving Sales Professionals, know. we use everything that's, that's available. I'll be honest, we don't have a single client right now that uses move, uh, that particular software. And now for a word from our sponsors. If you're a moving business owner, you may have already heard of Moversville, an email marketing service that helps moving companies increase, repeat, and referral business. But have you heard of Moversville Connect? Moversville Connect is an incredible resource for all things moving. They feature an array of vendors and services that cater specifically to the moving industry. You can find companies that provide moving software, moving sales services, marketing services, moving equipment providers, and much, much more. Visit moversville.com today to learn more. Yeah, and it was, uh, you know, we, we had uh, got to know them kind of through the uh, Unigroup channel at conferences and things like that. And you know, wonderful mm -hmm. people. They were great. And uh, unfortunately, we just kind of outgrew the system. I mean, when I say outgrew it, we outgrew it really, really quick. Um so then it kind of enter, hey, where do we go next? So I feel like that was a great kind of stepping stone to where we, we got and getting multiple interviews, looking at multiple different CRMs and move management systems. And along came Supermove. And I think the big thing for us, it, was, it wasn't it was necessarily the software because they were still new, um, right. new in their life cycle. It had enough that we could get by, but we knew what they were doing behind the scenes and the people were truly amazing. I think that was the big piece. We knew that they, were, they, they weren't going to go anywhere. And they were going to continue to build this machine um, to kind of have that all-in-one moving software, which it's you just don't have that nowadays. I mean, there's still people, and there's many great softwares out there. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. how many it, to work within one particular software, kind of womb to tomb, from your leads to your finances to the customer delight. There's not many softwares out there that are just basically that that all-in-one piece and. Uh, so obviously we were utilizing those guys for many years and uh, I decided to kind of take a step back from the moving industry just because I was getting, getting a little beat up and a little bit burnt out, right? You know, a smaller company wearing many, many hats. Um, so I decided to kind of take a step back and uh, my relationship with the folks within Supermove kind of just naturally drove that conversation um, to, hey, you know, could I potentially, you know, assist you all and there's a way that you can assist me as well. And, um, you know, we had some talks and uh, I came on board very lightly just because, again, I'm not some big techie guy. Right. But I knew how to utilize the software and I knew what it did for me. I knew what it did for our move coordinators, our salespeople, our operations people and our owner. Um, no, I just I just nothing but faith uh, within the super move organization that ultimately led to, to me to make that jump over. And uh, I, I wish I would have done it sooner, to, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. And it's the it's the first time in a long time that I feel like I'm back on a on like a really competitive sports team, right? So right, everybody, right. Wants well, yeah, there's there's a there's a lot of great CRMs out there. There really are. I think uh, you want to be with ones that are willing to listen and willing to adjust things because, like, I think, uh, and this is me speaking of experience with a lot of different CRMs that now there are, I'm, and I'm not going to mention a few because this is this this, this is this is your time to shine, so I'm not going to mention the other ones. But uh, there there are definitely there are definitely CRMs out there that encompass everything that you're mentioned. Uh, yeah. so I think in a lot of ways, well, like the basics of any CRM for us when it comes to moving, right? What do you want the CRM to do? Which is why we use everything, right? You want to see, you want to know, okay, where do I put customer information? Where do I put in an inventory? Where do I put in pricing? Uh, where, where do I send an email? Where do I send a text? Is there an option for a text? Right. And then you have, you have CRMs that are constantly evolving and changing, which is great. Uh, I think one big mistake that I feel that some CRMs have made, and I'm once again, I'm not going to mention those of you guys, uh, those of you guys will know what I'm talking about. The ones that use them, you'll know what I'm talking about and which of CRMs I'm referring to. But there are a couple of CRMs that have changed their um, interface in terms of where things were located. From my experience, 
I like you can change how the CRM looks. You can change the color scheme. You can change the, you know, the modernness or the buttons being bigger, smaller, whatever, right? More uh, options, whatever. But ultimately, you don't want to change where certain things are located. Like you don't want to change where like inventory versus pricing versus whatever is located because those are the things that people like for new people that are coming on board it does not matter but if you have a solid database of companies that already been using your stuff for a while some of them are definitely not are going to complain for sure so yeah, it's like yeah. it's one of those things that i feel in my experience that you don't want to like if you you can make you add things you can add features you can do a lot of things but you don't want to change location of certain things because for once again for new clients coming on board it won't matter for the clients yeah. that you have it will and some of them will feel strongly enough about that stuff that they may leave you all together and i think that that's that's one thing that's that's very important um at the same time you have some older crms out there and i'm going to mention those uh so you have granot that a lot of companies use brokers use those long distance movers use those right Granite really has not changed all that much in the past probably 10, 15 years. Yeah. So for that CRM, for, for that, maybe like mover works or mover base, uh the maybe like the old uh move it pro pentacles, I think that's what it was called. That, that's still one of those old uh ones that are not that's not web based that you actually have to download on your computer and stuff like that. Most of the stuff now, like Supermove or Smart Moving or uh, Moving Software or some of the other ones that are out there, they're all generally uh, web-based. So you don't need to have a separate computer sit in there and be on all the time because you want all the sales reps to be able to access. And if, God forbid that computer blows up, you're going to be between a rock and a hard place and you better have a, you know, a backup of, of some sort that's going to have all that information, right? So most of the newer ones, they're all web-based, right? Even, I mean, Granite's web-based too, but it's definitely limited in functionality. Like they still don't have text messaging. So yeah. and it's such a huge part of what we're doing today. And then some of the CRMs, they have phone system that's part of it. So they may have their own um, VoIP system that's connected to the CRM. I know at least one like that. So, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely a lot of interesting things in there, but I think when it comes down to it, if you take the most advanced ones right now that are specifically moving specific, and we're and I'm only talking, talking about moving specific CRMs, right? So if we're talking specifically about moving CRMs, I think once you get down to a point where like functionality gets pretty close, I think at that point, it's a matter of preference. It's a matter of at that point if you've built allegiance to a certain brand, but well, it's a matter of size too. I would yeah. say because I know a lot of the ones that are out there. I mean, one thing that I really take pride in um, for our group is the you know, the multi branch or franchising, yeah. right? I mean, we're we're geared up for that. So if you're right. a large moving company that's looking to expand and continue to grow multiple locations, or you currently have many locations. Mm -hmm. We're a perfect fit, but it all ties back in that overall piece, Yuri. I mean, if you're a company that has a couple trucks, you're doing some local moves, you know, you might not need all the cool things. Um, right. If right. you're okay with not expanding and you're, you're just happy with where you're at, that's okay. And some and some people are. I personally don't yeah. get it, but some people are. I mean, they're happy just running okay. their three trucks and they're not looking to do any more. And that's okay. You yeah, know, I mean, if that's what they want to do. To everyone, but I mean, we, we sure as heck try to. But again, you have to kind of know who your ideal customer is. And obviously we sure. want our customers to grow, right? We so want... Speaking of that, who is your ideal customer? Um, in, Well, it really, it doesn't. I mean, from independent to uh, van line. I mean, we can really work with them all. I mean, I know we've got uh, some integrations uh, plays in the works currently. I don't want to let too much out of the bag there, but uh right. We'll be able to connect to, again, we've got the ability to connect with any van line that's out there currently, which is wonderful. It's just a matter of who who do we want to partner with, who is going to basically have that best partnership with us. But uh, yeah, I mean, really, if you're you're an independent mover and you're 10 plus trucks up to 100, and it doesn't matter how many trucks you have, right? I mean, we're, mm -hmm. we're a one sure. fit. Uh, but hey, we have a ton of one and two truckers as well. And you know what? They love it. 
And I think the part why they love it as most is because they know they've got the ability to expand and we're here to help them expand and grow as well. All right. So, yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's important to have functionality because when it comes to pricing, so you got variety, right? You got local moving, that's by the hour, right? Yep. Then you got long distance where you got uh, cubes, you got pounds, then you got flat rate options, depending on what some of the companies do. They do differently. Some do flat rate based on, once again, cubic feet or based on inventory or best based on truck size. There's so many different ways of doing it. Uh, at the same time, like for example, I talk to a lot of uh, people in the removals industry over the pond, right? So I talk to a lot of guys in UK and they do everything based on cubic feet. So yeah. like their local moving is based on cubes. Their long distance moving is based on cubes. It's all cubic feet. So like uh, it's definitely, I, I think for CRM, especially, look, we have a huge market in UK. You have a huge market in Canada. And I think whatever CRM uh, it is, whether it's super move or something else, you definitely want to have the ability to cover both here and those other two places, because those other two places, they got a pretty strong moving, moving base. Yeah. So you definitely want to make sure. And I mean, I don't know. I mean, I heard India has some good moving. I, I heard Japan and China do as well. Australia. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not delving into those markets because obviously for us call, from the calling perspective, the time difference would kill us. I mean, we're able to do UK, but even UK is five hour difference. So yeah, no, we worked with a ton. So back in uh, when I was kind of in, in seat, sort of say, we did a ton of international uh, work as well. So there was a lot of companies overseas that, you know, I remember the container would show up and our crews would be out there offloading the container and just the quality of how they packed, how they wrapped. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was insane. So there's, there's a lot of uh, amazing right. companies over the pond sort of thing. Right. right. Yeah. So the so CS, we'll as, as a CRM, you want to be able to be accessible and marketable to them as well. I mean, I know one CRM in UK, that's, that's a very nice CRM and I know the developer as well, but that, but he only works on UK. So it's uh, for, for those, for those of you UK listeners, it's uh, trust your move. I think I know who you're talking about there. Mark, Mark Willis. Oh, okay. I was thinking of somebody different. So no. no, Mark Willis, he's a great guy, by the way. Ah, have to meet. Have to broker an email here. Broker an intro. No problem. But yeah, he's a, he's a CRM guy, so he has he has his own. But yeah, okay. I mean, that's a, that, the thing that it, it gets me a little. It gets me kind of gears me up a little bit. Kind of maybe a little moving ramp. But you know, I've met a lot of folks in uh, in this industry in this space. Got like the super move space, right? In the tech side of the house, and it's sure. like. Sometimes they get a little too tight to have the conversation. It's just like, you know what? We're all in this. To me, I'm in this for the movers, ultimately. Right. But Same CRM, as me. CRM, Same move as me. Management, what, and, and we talked about this last right. week in New York, right? I mean, right. Mm -hmm. we should all be able to get in a room and have a good conversation. It's not I'm absolutely not your customers or I'm not trying to steal this newest, latest bell or whistle. It's not about that. It's just. Well, so for, for some people, it is, though. Yeah, you you, you got to understand that not everybody thinks that way. So for some people, it is about it is about stealing that thing. Like me, uh, I mean, I worked in sales for a very long time before I opened this company. So when I did, my thought was initial thought and still is today is to put professional sales into the moving industry. Yeah. And I honestly believe that we have done that and that we do it every day. And uh we are the best in the market when it comes to sales and when it comes to call center for moving companies. We are the best in terms of what we offer, in terms of all the things that we do that, that our competitors don't, um, yeah. just just in general. But you know, my podcast is not about me selling my service. Certainly, <laughs> if you guys are interested, uh, feel free to hit me up. But that's not what this is about. Uh, it's all about content. And it's it's all about the people like Ryan that we bring on and we chat with about the things that are industry. So speaking of the industry, where do you see the industry going, you think, in the next five to 10 years? What do you think? Ooh, We're all... I guess that's, uh, th th this conversation go many ways. Um, so do you see where the industry is going when it comes to tech or where the industry is going as a whole? Um in general, I guess. I guess what uh, what, what, what the way do you want me to dive down? I mean, Both. me personally, how I see Pick it, and just, I see is the moving industry almost turned into kind of like the, and I know a lot of people are going to give me backlash on this, but that's okay. But almost like that Uber-like experience, right? I mean, 
right now it's daunting. Um, I mean, call, call some of these local movers that have been around for 30, 40 years. And it's, you make the phone call, they schedule the appointment two weeks later, somebody shows up to your house and they do a handwritten estimate. You get the estimate a week later, then you try to book mm -hmm. and then the truck shows up. Oh no. If, no. You, if, you, if, you, if you do things honestly, and that's one of the things that we we were talking at the event about, and uh, I was in Arizona last week. So I talked about that over there to quite a few guys over there too. You need to be, a, if you're a company that's been in the industry for a very long time, you need to adjust to the change. It doesn't matter that what you've done before has worked for you for all these years. Today, unfortunately, with the housing market, with the interest rates, with everything that people are going through, basically, look, here's the reality. Here's, here's a nugget for you if you guys haven't realized this yet. We are on the bubble when it comes to housing markets, same way we were in 2010. It's the same exact situation. So right now, it makes more sense to rent a house than to buy a house because of interest yeah. rates, one. And two, you try to you buy a house right now that's normally would be like a $400,000, $450,000 home. Today, that same home is worth like five fifty, six hundred, six fifty. dollars dollars But that number because of they're so short on inventory, those numbers are not real. Those numbers are inflated. So what what is that going to mean? That means that maybe next year, maybe a year after that, maybe in three years, hopefully not that long, but uh, within the next three years, that bubble is going to burst 100%. It's going to burst. And what's going to happen is people that bought it at that time, I'm not talking about people that bought it lower because they have good hands and they can fix everything in that house themselves, right? And in reality, uh, you know, if that house was brand new, it would actually be worth what they paid for it, right? Or something like that. I'm talking about people that bought that house for 450k, for example, and it's worth 350k, right? So when that thing bursts, you're going to be a hundred thousand negative. Oh yeah, you're going to lose no, that money. Not only are you losing that money, you're also been paying six, seven percent, eight percent. Who knows what the interest rate is going to be next year, year after that? Hopefully, it goes back down to what it was. I mean, I'm still at three point five, thank God. But uh, but it also keeps me from buying anything because I yeah, don't want to go I'm there three, because I don't I don't want to be negative. <laughs> but yeah, that's many many years ago. And again, we want to make the jump. And yes, my house is worth a heck of a lot more money. Mm -hmm. But, I'm also but nowhere to go to. Money and then paying seven plus percent. But for nowhere to go to. That's exactly the thing. I bought my I yep. bought my townhouse for two hundred thousand in two thousand sixteen. Today I could probably sell sell it for three twenty three forty, but there's nothing to buy that's worth buying. So like if I if I do that, I'm going to lose money. Yeah, I, 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 lose money. The, I see this. You know, if you look back at 2021, 2022, I mean, leads were plenty. And I think we discussed this at the thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, salespeople were order takers. You know, you we're turning down more moves than anything. And then yeah. insert 2023, look where we are. Holy cow. I see this. Again, this is me. I see this going in towards more or less the tail end of 2024. And oh, I have hundreds, uh, hundreds and hundreds of moving company owners, Jury. I mean, not weekly, but throughout the year, right? And there gonna, there's going to be companies, uh, hundreds of companies, honestly, the, that are going to go out of business during this time. And are. most of those companies are companies that, frankly, they don't want to make a change. It's, yeah. And it's also companies that say, okay, I want to stay at my $170 an hour for two men price, for yeah. example. And that's great if you want to do that. But if you do that, you got to you got to understand that if at that at that price, when everybody around you is charging 120, for example, for the same thing, right? At that price, you're gonna book maybe one, two jobs a week. And maybe you'll make two hundred dollar profit from each one of those jobs. So that's four hundred dollars a week profit that you made. Is that enough money for you to live on? No. No, absolutely not. So, I think that's but versus you dropping to where the rest of the world is and then doing something creative to separate you, like support move for hunger, for example, or some other charity. You know, do something that the people in your area are not doing. Get creative. I mean, a lot of movers that I've talked to over the past two weeks, and I've talked to a lot, believe me, over two hundred, over three hundred maybe that I've talked to go into two separate moving company events. They're all talking about the same thing. They're talking about the renter's market. 
renters market is what where it is right now like the high level where you're talking uh going from three bedroom apartments to uh, you know to to homes that are like four five six whatever bedrooms i i chalk it up as if you're just if you're living on local moves right and even interstate moves if that's your main focus you're ultimately you you got a slow death coming is how i see it you gotta um, do all types of moves. You, you can't just think, ju pigeonhole yourself in one in ju just long distance or just local. You gotta do everything yeah. that comes your way, especially no, right every, now. Every line of business has a season. You gotta know based on your area and your surroundings, whether you've got universities or you've got large warehouse, you've got to know your market better than anybody else, mm -hmm. right? So, and I don't, I'm not a big fan of this whole, hey, well, the competition's 120 an hour, I'm 170. Why not have a capacity-based pricing system, right? We, th this industry has relied so so long on, ooh, peak and non-peak. Why can't we just kind of have a peak and a little bit of valleys throughout? And based on your capacity to book moves, determines the price that you... you right, you but the problem is, here. and I understand it's uh, honestly what you're talking about right now, honestly, that's utopia. And the reason that's utopia is because... Oh. Let me tell you why I think it's utopia. Many companies are doing this today, and the ones right. That are but the problem the is, day, we got stuff. all these unlicensed movers that are out there, and they're the ones that are knocking the market down. They're the ones that are knocking yeah. the hourly rates, and they're they're the ones that are affecting this type of thing going on. Versus, you know, more smooth sailing. That's exactly what's hurting things. I mean, how many? I, I keep hearing this conversation. In my twelve years in the industry, I came up on one rogue mover, and I was oh, no, I I. I I get I get call about co companies that want, that need sales all the time, and me specifically, I, that I don't work that, with unlicensed uh, at all. You know, letting that rogue mover, you know, have the 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 pants down drop rate that's going to move that customer that only moves every ten years, if that anyway. Mm -hmm. Do I want that business? No, no. Your rogue mover is not going to be diversified. They're not going to be doing commercial moving. They're not going to be an international, and they're not going to have really really good accounts. Of so course, and they're not going to go on base. Is. They're not going to do any no, government not work. They're not doing do any of that. They're, it's they're true. The lowest margin work that's out there right now. So right. let them have. Let right, them but the problem is, is that if it's if it's slow as it is, and it's slow, especially certain parts of the country, really slow. So if that's out there, and keep in mind, the rogue mover, he doesn't have insurance. He doesn't have those expenses. Insurances was shot up quite yeah. a bit this year too. So not only is there that, that that's part of the issue is that the pie that was larger before it's smaller pie, so you got smaller pieces available. On top of that, you got more expenses because the insurances went up, gas, diesel went went up, uh, parts went up for fixing your trucks, uh, cost for labor went up. All, all this stuff is up, up, up. Meanwhile, you're you have to be here in order to stay alive, basically. Right, you have to be here. Meanwhile, there's a mover right here who doesn't have the insurance and all this other stuff that you have because you are licensed, right? But they're ultimately good. they're going to phase themselves out, right? It's just it's a matter of time. It's a, uh, matter, it's a matter of time before, before they get busted. It's a matter of time before they get into an accident or something right. like that. It's a matter of time before they get busted. But the problem is, is that those guys also, you know, they're like mushrooms after rain. But isn't that, I mean, I guess to me, if I was an owner and to me, that's even, that's, it, that dives a whole deeper question. That's even scarier. If you've got a rogue mover in your area that, that's scraping up non-marginal work, mm -hmm. that's potentially threatened to put you out of business. Yeah. That's what I would almost go back to, to my house and my team and be like, Hey, self-reflection in the mirror here. If this rogue mover is putting us out of business for taking over local moves in my area, mm -hmm. I would look at myself in the mirror and be like, hey, am I doing everything I can throughout the community with my team or what have you when it comes to being strategic about being successful? I mean, whoa. I mean, I know there's some rogue movers around. That was never my focus because I knew when I went into a home or I went to commercial property, mm -hmm. we had value. We had the value. Well, that's, that's, well, that's what it you got to do. It wasn't about price, $20 right. an hour less. Right. I mean, my gosh, the, the average and consumer can sit there and look and be like, this is garbage. Like I'm and, not and I agree, and that. I agree with you, and I don't, and it is about build, building value, building volume on your business. But the problem is, is that the other the other part of the uh, of this whole situation is that your average consumer 
also has less money to go around because of all those other things, because of rental properties being more expensive, housing being more expensive, all those things that ended up happening this year where people are affected quite a bit. We had COVID. Then now we have two wars taking place. We have all the stuff that's going on that's affecting what we do here every day, right? So now there's like, so the question is, yeah, your company has value. But if your company has value and at the end of the day, at the end of the move, your company that has value is going to cost, let's say, $200, $300, $400 more than the company that is not so great or it is rogue or whatever the case, that's the, the customer's not going to think, well, not every customer, let's some yeah, customers will, but the customers that are, the customers that are pinching, they're going to think that's $300, $400 that I could spend on groceries. And when yeah. it comes to making, is, having is to that make the, groceries. Is that the ideal customer that you as your moving company wants. If that customer is kind of budgeting, hey, groceries versus a move, it's not a customer that I want. And I, I don't ever turn Ultimately, away. Ultimately, but if you're trying to keep your guys working. Diversification. Get out of that. Get out of those lanes. You can be in those lanes when they're hot, but when they're not, you've got backup. That's where, I mean, to me, it's diversification, man, all day long. Well, every, I mean, every moving yeah, company is, needs to have a di diverse stream of income. Absolutely. And basically, I, I almost asked that moving company, like, just like you kind of asked me, what's my ideal customer profile, right? We know it's A, B, C, D. If you ask a moving company today, what's your ideal customer look like? I'd be interested to hear what the response is. Do they just take, hey, well, whatever lead comes over, that's my customer or no, we are very, no. we only touch. I think mo most will say the customer that's willing to pay for good service. Yeah, I think that would be the bottom line. Customer, but anyway, we can talk about this for a customer that's willing to uh, that's shopping best price. Right. So right. Oftentimes, no, no. The, the, the customer that's shopping best price is going to be the same customer that's going to ask for additional discounts on the day of the move. It's going to be the same customer that's going to end up having more items uh, to be moved in uh, the original inventory that we took. It's 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 that customer that's going to give us uh, that's going to be rushing our guys to uh, hurry, 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 hurry the whole entire move. And when that happens, of course, damage is going to happen. And then that I, customer is going to be that, complaining uh, about damage. Everything you just mentioned, I put directly 100 percent responsibility on that account executive or moving salesperson right. that they did not set the tone. That's, from day and one. you know what? That's one of the reasons I, I always tell my guys it's OK to not take certain customers. It's okay to not really? book certain jobs because certain jobs are not going to be worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I boil that all down back to this. And I'm probably gonna take a ton of flack from the sales reps, but that that's me. I lived in this world for 12 years. You right. need to set the tone. If the you customer's know. adding things last minute and you're not aware of it, it's not the customer's fault. It's yours. Absolutely. If the customer's trying to ask for discounts last minute, you, you didn't sell. You, there's no value there in your price. Yeah, like you that. didn't. You didn't Why build it, and at the same time, you didn't set the parameters. Yeah, so all you of that stuff take needs charge. to be done. Of course, we often think in this industry that customers understand our language. They understand what we do. They have no idea. Even customers that move a ton of times, mm -hmm. right? they still need to be handled with kid gloves. Walk them Absolutely. through the process like they've never moved before. Right. Don't throw the fancy language. And I, this is a kind of a funny one, but. Uh, one of my first moves, um, uh, Unigroup move, I was you know kind of reviewing, and this was me kind of going with the customer of, hey, origin agent, destination agent, da da da. Well, let's chat with the customer. I said, hey, your DA is going to be so and so, and highly educated woman, right? Highly, highly educated, very, very wealthy. She looked at me and goes, well, I don't understand why they're involved. And I said, well, what do you mean? The, the DA is the one that's going to grab your shipment, but and she goes, what's the district attorney doing? involved with this move. <laughs> and I just was like, oh my gosh, wait a minute, take the hat off. They don't know what OA and DA is. And half the time right. they don't know destination agent. I mean, what right. is a destination agent? Right. If you're not in the industry, what is right. it? You're like, ah. So again, eliminating all of this language that we use day in and day out, that we talk with our colleagues. And I had to have this conversation within our organization because I sat through the, my first meeting with, the, with, with Supermove the first hour, it was abbreviations, and and I'm just sitting there going, what just happened? Like, I had right. no idea what this hour-long meeting was about, but right. after I was able to break it down with somebody afterwards, I'm like, wow, if I would have known that. But again, that's right. one of the things where, you know, breaking down that industry language and, and speaking like a, you know, like these people don't know. Yeah, and and they don't. So we really need to break it down because and it's the same thing as uh, I like to, like, 
how many people don't know the difference between full packing and full packing? And what I mean by that is you have companies that will put in language, all packing services are included. And well, for your regular customer, same. that's what it sounds like, right? Except that what it actually is, is all the packing services included, but not the packing materials. Yeah. Well, so I, the true language I is too. all packing services and all packing materials are included. That's what it should say. But Ryan, you and I can talk about this for hours. So we are getting to the end of our segment Ooh, here. So thank you. Great. Yeah, it did. It did. But lots of good content. Love it. Uh, so thank you for joining us for this. And as I always say, the world moves on its own. So let the professionals move yours for you. Thank you for joining us for the podcast. Continue listening, tuning in, like, subscribe, and we'll put a link for Supermove uh, underneath this podcast. And once again, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate you having me, Yuri, and uh, we'll see you soon, man. Have a great no day. Thank, thank you. you.